Hey folks, this is Mike Hansen. Go to Mike Hansen Archives, and here we go. We got ABC News, right? Hi. Hi. Good morning, Mike Hansen. How are you doing? I am really glad Good. to see you. Good. Great. Welcome to the Davy Crockett. The Davy. You know Crockett. I'm a descendant of Davy Crockett, Hi. right? I think you told me that. Yeah. There's the there's the chart right there. It starts off with my wife and I, and it goes all, all the way over to Davy Crockett's father. He was my fifth great grandpa. That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Is this the site too of the Wicca Museum? Yes, I got it in the back. Wow. I yes, wasn't but sure. I don't show it to everybody. I only show what? it to certain people like you. Special. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Mike, yes. for giving me the special privilege. I yes, wasn't and sure. I got some gifts for you too. When you told me, you're so nice. Yeah. What, that you were in a 4,000 square foot facility, whether that Building. was all the Wicca Museum or just part of the Wicca. Well, we have all our offices here. We have rental so, property and a maintenance company here, and then and then I got my Davy Crockett stuff over there, and the old pictures of Gonzalez, and then we have a little uh, gift shop here too. But they collect the rent right here, mm -hmm. and uh, and we do our maintenance out of here. Actually, have five companies, very small companies, not like ABC News now. <laughs> well, I appreciate nothing as big as Alex Jones Productions and Info Wars. I appreciate you yeah. making the time. Yes. On a Sunday, I didn't want to take you out to church. Oh no! Right. Oh, oh no! Okay. That's that's not a problem around here. Okay. 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 So I want you to meet Andy, who's okay. my cameraman, okay. and he'll probably just want to take a really quick look at what the, right. what it looks like, so he knows what equipment okay. to bring in. All right. And did, did you bring like, me a makeup girl? I don't think you need it. You're looking pretty good to me. Huh? All right. I was shooting from my dad was uh, a mortician, an ambulance driver back then, and he saved a bunch of people. He met my mother as a nurse. My mother was a nurse for 50 years. But my dad was a big hero, and he was on the front page of all the papers in the United States for that. Wow. And like, like a, I'll tell you on film, I'm not anti-government. I'm very devoted to my country, but the government's what I have a problem with. Well, I want You know, to I was that. in the military. I see that. Yeah, and my wife was too, my father was, and my grandpa fought in World War II. This is, this is my office. All the times I ran for office and... Um, retired bus driver and da da da. Wait, what did you run for? For commissioner? I ran for Travis County, County Commissioner, Gonzales City Council, uh, the mayor of Gonzales. I ran for constable and I ran for city council. So you were a civic minded person. Oh, yes. Well, that was per Alex Jones told people to do that. This is uh, when we. This is the hat. Oh, right. That, you burned it, we built it. Yeah, that's what I wore. Right. When. when um, when we rebuilt the church but you know like i want to tell you that it so was this just is, not this is the waco museum well part of it's waco part of it's bohemia grove i see you know the waco part's kind of over here you uh -huh. know when we rebuilt you know the the church here and the newspaper articles and what we think of the atf and you know uh -huh. that type of stuff and uh this guy Richard McCastle, he wrote Alex this letter, and he ended Who's up Richard going. Richard McCastle. Well, he's somebody from Hollywood, and he ended up going into the Bohemian Grove, burning, trying to burn it down. You know what the Bohemian Grove is, right? Yes, I looked it up. Because I'm going right. to give you, a, I'm going to give you a book. Okay, is that one yeah. of my presents? Yes, that's okay. one of your presents. It sure is. Okay. And um, I'm just trying to take a look at all you have here. So you have a lot of photographs. Yeah, and the Ku Klux Klan came down here. You know. One, uh, at least one third of the people in, that got killed at Waco were, were black. Mm -hmm. And the Ku Klux Klan came down here when we were rebuilding it and uh, we had a shootout with them. They tried to burn our place down. They tried to burn the, burn the, the structure we had at the time up, down. Really? That's about, yes. They came to Waco all the wow, way from- Wow, I never heard about that. Oh yes. Yeah, the building has bullet holes. Yeah, they mm -hmm. shot at us and we shot back. Yeah, it was so, you know, when they try to say that we're racist, you know, anybody's fighting a new world order is racist. That's just not true. So, I'm just trying to see whether you get a little more light in here. I think you might be yeah. able to put up a light. Do, so this, this okay. part is not, has not got to do with. Well, well it I all, got, let me just tell you this. It all goes together. Because let me just tell you about Moloch. 
Oh wait a minute! But let me now that I've seen this. Okay, I, but what let I me. Do is I want. I want. It all fits together. I know, but you know what we always say? What? Save it for the okay. camera. Okay. Well, I, I. I need to get my boy. That's so what that we can, want. So he can take a look. It, it's on the camera. That part. It's on our Facebook. Uh, that part could be cut out about the sacrificing part. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but I think they were sacrificed at Waco, and uh, that's what I want to tout. Okay. Yeah, that shooting down here in 1967 on the UT Tower. Oh, the, the bell tower. Yeah, my dad was a hero in that. He, oh. It's a picture of him on the on the and, wall and in there. He, and he's part of the Davy Crockett line. Oh, yeah, I got the, okay. the the chart. My son did that. I already knew it from way back, but yeah. my son did the DNA to prove it. Have you seen the documentary about it? What? About the the tower. Oh yeah. They took all the audio and. Um, my dad's in animated? it. My dad's in it because yeah, he was one of the ones going out there running and grabbing them and wow. pulling them back in. Wow. Did you see it over here? There's my dad right here. Right here. This picture was on the front page of every paper in the United States. Yeah, I got, I got, I found one of the papers at a garage sale. Wow, at a garage sale. Yeah, I got it in there. Can you believe it? So amazing. Yeah, right here. This is the room. Okay. With all. That's it right there. I, I found that at a garage sale. Amazing. So or a state sale. That's what it was. So it's just let's give Andy just an idea right. of what we're going to talk about. You burn it, we build it, is what they were wearing at mm -hmm. the time. So um, it's. But it, will you help? You but I want to tie it into this because, you know, she wants to know what I think about Waco. You know, I just don't think that the Bohemia Grove are sacrificing babies on the altar of the of Moloch, that's the Bushes, you know, those type of people and the super rich and the and the elite. I don't think they're doing I think they're doing it in the real world and that's what happened at Waco. They okay. they sacrificed I don't want you to tell us too much because I want to do it when we're wrong. Oh, okay. So all I want to understand is I wrote a whole book about it. Yes, just show me where like the where, where generally the places that you want to talk about. Well um, they're all they're first, all over. There's there's all the articles were rebuilt. Okay, so let me let me just let me just go through this because yeah. I I'm, I'm just trying to absorb it. That's goes. all the so, Davidians. These are the Davidians. There no, is, that's when we snuck in right there. That's this, the, is, this we, is this is this is when we Jones snuck in at part. the Bohemia. That's right there's the Davidians. That's right. all the Waco over there in that area. That's when the Ku Klux Klan came down and tried to burn our place down. This is and kind we of had a shootout. I didn't know about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so and what is all this stuff here? Uh just. Just stuff? stuff over the years, just the microphone we used. You told me that you had the camera. I, I did. I actually produced over for Jeff Davis and Alex Jones. I, I produced over a, over a thousand oh, Access TV uh, for for them. You know, I was and his. I was Alex. Look at our first camera. That's what we made those first documentaries off of. Look at that camera. I got 1994 old camera. Not as good as that. Now Alex has about 60 people doing the same thing I did, mm. did back for him. Mm. You know, he's big time now. There he is. Oh, yeah. That's that's our younger days. That's when we first started on Access TV. There's Jeff Davis. But right around, when would that be? This year? Vis -vis when you were? Mid-90s. So that's right. That Mid-90s, and this is just not too long ago. I was on his radio show. But that would be when you were building the ch church. Right here. Right? This is when we were building the church right here. Oh, okay. Got it. And I was the project coordinator. I'm just going to, you mind if I pop the light off again? Let's sure. Take a look at something here. Okay. <clears throat> and that's when Alex confronted the FBI agent. On the property, and then we confronted the ATF agent right there. On the property, yes, on property? the property. You can get that clip off my, off my Canson archives or off the internet. Just put in Alex Jones confronts FBI agent, and it's a good clip too. It is good, <laughs> really <laughs> is. Oh man, this it's is great. great. Thank you very much for inviting me. I really but, appreciate I mean, it. I've really had. Well, I'll say it for the camera. Yeah. So here's what I understand. Is there any place that you would like? What I want to do actually is just. Maybe just bounce a light up here. You can do whatever um, you want to do. But I don't want to see the light. So are you, yeah. you guys want to talk about anything here or no? No, that's just just <coughs> what I've done recently. So here, yeah. there, there. Okay. I got arrested 
for fighting the ATF here in Gonzales. They were trying to take our police department over. But that's not, that has no, nothing that to do with, do with the re church rebuilding. Okay, so that's what I figured. But I want to bounce something. I think so. you ought to tie the Bohemia Grove into the Waco because I think it has a lot to do. I found out later it has a lot to do with what happened at Waco. You want to know my opinion? I'm just know, telling you. Right. My opinion. A lot of other people's opinion too. So let me my back, you so see it right there. They when they came out, when they came out there, he came out there to the re building. There, I mean, what happened when that? I mean, I've heard some different stories. I've heard that story. guy right there. That's a Davidian, and me confronted his confronted him and they y'all have to have footage of it somewhere I because your cameras was there see abc news right right that was the local affiliate right oh okay maybe well, it was it must, i don't know i don't know i never can tell but i mean i because clive told me that he was fine with people coming oh yeah they're and so forgiving they are. but that don't mean we have to be <laughs> you know they killed 82 82 people can you pull that down? Sure. Because I think that's an interesting story. Yeah. Thank you. How forgiving she is. About no, I, we have her whole done. family was killed by those we did. We did elements you. of our government. And she, no, she's she, very, she she's just, very I mean, they're just but like, uh, are. yeah, I know. They're just so <laughs> forgiving. Like, <laughs> they're just so forgiving. Okay with you oh, yeah. Footage Absolutely. Because I think it's a really good story. Absolutely. You okay. can use anything you want. All right. Get the word out. But I'm, I am going to check with you because I know there's a lot of stuff. There's, there's no, a lot of stuff that I'm actually it. not certain. That, you, what fair, the use, is. fair use. Fair use. Fair <laughs> use. Yes, it's uh -huh. fair use. You can use it if you're doing it for a, a documentary purpose. Well, up to a point. You well, just, you just that's my opinion. Identify that those sections yeah. for me. If you're if you're using it and talking about it, you mm -hmm. can use it. I, I, and we've been through this up a lot. on Mike's channel. I have the first day of the build where they all met in Austin and yeah. then drove to Waco. I put, my, I put it on my Facebook where you can get that. Well, we have very strict rules because we're the network. So yeah, but most of it's our film. But just as long as it's yeah. your film. But some of yes. it is, I can tell, is not, I think, is maybe not for your film that you're using other sources. Well, we're using the news that uh, right. the news pieces. We can only use a certain amount of that. Well, I know that Andy's going to tell you to take off your oh, right, lanyard, okay. <laughs> yeah. so I might as well say yeah, the jangly key lanyard. <laughs> well, I, you know, the older I get, I lose my keys, so I have them around my neck. You know, that's a lot of keys. Yeah. How many rental properties are you? Uh, in? We take care of about sixty. That's we're a the lot. same age. I'm losing my tripod. But <laughs> they're not rental properties like you're used to in New York, youngsters. Believe it or not. What do you mean by that? Well, they're just, they're just, you know, plain houses. We go from about three fifty to seven hundred is our range in right. rentals. They're just low end rentals. I know. A lot of them, my grandpa built by hand. But my and, grandpa was a master carpenter. Andy and I are very impressed by these neighborhoods. We're driving into this town. We're going, wow, this is like all these beautiful. Oh, houses. they got a bunch of. Well, see, this used to be a cattle baron's town. Before that went broke, oh. and then we got oil a couple of years ago. Now that's went broke. We have about three thousand people leave town. Oop, I think he's going to run out. Uh, okay. So I think what I'm going to do is let me go, okay. go through your shirt. I'm going to go right. right to there. Okay? All right. So uh, if you can open up a little section right there. Do you mind if I reach inside? Sure. My hands go ahead. Are cold. Go ahead. I don't know. They're go that ahead. cold. You can stand. <laughs> Actually, you can. The hundred pounds of weight I've gained. <laughs> you know, I used to be very, very slim, <laughs> slender. Did you, did you notice that? So this, I did, sorry, I did. Here. There, right there. there. Yeah. Just feed who, on down. Who is famous who lives in Lockhart, Texas? There's somebody very famous, like a so politician. I'll let you, uh, feed or this down. You're like, hmm, I oh, it's in Wikipedia. Well, my my lawyer lives in uh, Lockhart. <laughs> <laughs> Millie Thompson. <laughs> we She's at, famous to me because she got me off of three years going to prison. What's that crazy building that's in the middle of town that looks like very exotic, lots of little turrets, it's red and crazy. It's right off the That's the courthouse. That's oh, the courthouse? You mean, you mean right up here? No, I meant in, in Lockhart. Oh, that's the courthouse. Wow. Yeah, that's... Texas has, a, a what, 259 courthouses like that? I think we have 259 counties. I might be wrong on that, but it's, it's like that. I think we have 259 sheriffs. How many counties do we have in Texas? Look it up on your Wikipedia. Two hundred and fifty or something like that. I talked to um, Larry Lynch about uh -huh. this. He's a good guy. Yeah. But Gonzalez is where the come and take it came from. Oh yeah. Hold on one second. I gotta get that too. 
you've seen the people like tea parties using the come and take it flag. That all happened here. building of the church. I actually think it's pretty interesting mm -hmm. that you had that um, uh, conflagration with the KKK. Over well, that was just one one two-day yeah. period in the whole seven months we were up here. We I had other stuff happen, too, where people chased Alex around with butcher knives. And well, I, want, I, want, I mean, I, want, I, want, I mean, it's like, just, it's so much. It's all, Alex got fired from, a, from his radio show because of rebuilding that church too also I think all of that all that's on that documentary okay but i'm going to ask you now while we're mm -hmm. doing that so i want to ask okay. you about your interest in the church and why you got involved in rebuilding it and some of these incidents that okay. were involved and i want to ask you what you think of waco okay. and why um i mean it, it is i mean from yeah. our conversations something of a, a, a rallying cry for you and so I want to know why. Well, it become why a, it, it was why? a rallying call, but then it become personal when I when I met all these people and become very good friends with most of them, and then it become my agenda to rebuild the church. For mm -hmm. it was actually my idea to rebuild yeah, the church there, and then I in, touted it to Alex, and he finally went with it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and God used him to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to uh, promote it. On his radio show because he's good at that. He's good at promotion. Yes, he is. I'm behind the scenes person. What? Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm a behind the I scenes person. Believe. You know, I I like I said, I've done over producing. You're not on film. Right. You know, I the did on the, over okay. a thousand. All right. So okay, let me let me yes. get a drink. Okay. If you can stay on the side of it. Hey, we got drinks. We got all kind of drinks if y'all want some. Thank what do you very hospitable. We got all kind of drinks in these two refrigerators. You, all you can drink. Thank you. Um, so, you know, if he's talking blah, 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 if you're on this side. Yeah, where do you want us to start? Like, I'm going to start with a stable interview, just mm -hmm. asking him seven. I assume he's going to start walking around a little bit. Mm -hmm. So where do you want him to start? What optimal place to be? Maybe he's a little deeper in the room. It's nice if he's sort of in, in the center. Here. Like, I, that's what I figured. So maybe yeah. right here? Oh, right standing. here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's start right there. Unless you've had your drink. Did you take your drink? Yeah. Okay. Did y'all want one? No, I'm going to put your drink off okay. of the, to right. the side since we Work. don't want to My advertise from the Oh, drink, yeah. Along with you, bro. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So, you are going to stand. I got some ropes there in case I forget some. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm not a professional like y'all are. I think okay. you're pretty great. Okay. Know? I mean, okay, so you're going to stand here. Okay. Yeah, you want to be on the right side of the left. Okay. Okay, just take a look. And you look at me. Okay. I'm talking. And um, Andy's going to tell us when we can go. Okay. okay. Stand by. <laughs> <laughs> and we are speeding. I want to stream close ups now. Closer, closer, you know. <laughs> no, like I don't want to. We're like this. Man. Okay, good. All right, so easiest question first. Yes. Give me your name and tell me what you do and what your involvement is and where we are. I'm Mike Hansen, and uh, I've been fighting the new, new World Order with Jeff Davis and Alex Jones for almost 25 years now, since the mid 90s. And you just don't beat the New World Order. Do you know what the New World Order is? You just don't beat it. You just kind of back it off a little bit for your grandchildren to leave, live another day. That's the way you do it. You're never going to beat these people that we're talking about that murdered these people at Waco. You'll just back them off a little bit. But my name's Mike Hansen, and we have been at it for our, since the mid-90s. Uh, produced for Jeff Davis and Alex Jones at least a thousand Access TV shows. Uh, over the last 20 years. And uh, what else did you want to know? Hold well, that thought. Gonna do a little audio gist here. I'm gonna ask you my first question. Okay. That was it, that was it. So, you've established what you referred to to me as your own private Waco Museum here. Yes. Tell me, what's in the, in your Waco Museum? To Not everybody gets to see it. It's in the back of my building here in Gonzales, Let Texas. Let me just stop you for a second. When when you, what my questions are never gonna be heard. Okay. Mister, you've, you've been on television, All so. Right. Uh, not everybody gets to see the way my Waco Museum because yes. nobody knows what it is. Yes. So tell me, um, tell me about where we are and what is here. Well, 
we're in my Waco Museum and my Bohemia Grove Museum because that ties into Waco. And it's just a lot of artifacts and pictures of everything that we've done in the last 25 years about Waco and the Bohemia Grove and the Access TV shows that uh, I've produced and all the activism that we've done over the last 25 years to uh, stave off the New World Order and to kind of make a better country for our children. And like I said before, I'm not anti-government. Well, I am anti-government, but I'm not anti-country. I'm a veteran, my wife's a veteran, my dad's a veteran, and my grandpa fought in World War II. We love this country, but we do not love what they, the super elite, the secret rulers of the world are doing to this country. And that's what I want to fight. And so Waco has always been um, uh, a great concern to you. Why is Waco what troubles you about what happened in Waco? Well, when I think of Waco, I think of murder and cover-up because that's exactly what the Clinton uh, crime family and their bosses that they work for or did. And the Bushes had something to do with it, I'm sure, too, because they're part of the Bohemia Grove. Uh, they, they're sitting there uh, sacrificing uh, children in effigy and worshiping their god, which is the devil, Moloch. I mean, I have a book I want to give you. Uh, I'll sign it over to you. Uh, I wrote a book on Bohemia Grove. Alex Jones and I snuck in that place and got footage. You can go to the internet, my cans and archives on YouTube, and you can watch the footage of what I'm talking about. I'm just not saying it. I saw it myself. And so you said when I it, when I think Waco, okay, go ahead. I was going to say you said it was a murder. Why was Waco a murder to you? Because. They, our elements of our government took a tank, a tank, you saw it for yourself on TV, and went through a church, a building, with men, women, and children on the other side of that wall. Some of those bricks, the children were inside of a concrete room, which they called the bunker, but it was really where they kept their canned foods, and some of those bricks fell on the chi children's heads and... Uh, they died according to the autopsies. That's murder. Plus, they had a they had film of the Delta Force or whoever was there shooting shooting the Davidians where they were coming out of the fire in the back of the of the back of the uh, building. That right there is uh, Mike Minolti proved that in his uh, documentary uh, Waco Rules of Engagement. And uh, the only ones that came out alive were Clive Doyle and some of the rest of them. David Thibodeau in the front of the building where the cameras were, where y'all's cameras were, some of y'all's cameras. And that's the only way that they came out alive. The rest of them died. And I think it was a clear cover up in murder. And you're saying, why does the, you know, why does this all matter? You know, we got to live our life for the last 25 years, but these poor 82 people and even the federal agents didn't get to leave their lives for the last 25 years. So it, that's why that we rebuilt the church is for a memorial to the people that died and a statement from us, maybe not from the Davidians, but a statement from myself, Alex Jones, and all the 43, the people that came from 43 states and two foreign countries to rebuild this church. It's a statement to the government. It will never happen again in our lifetime. Hopefully we can train our grandchildren to have the same attitude and it will never happen again. But I think we did a great job rebuilding the church for the Branch of Indians and uh, hopefully it, was, it, it, it stood since 1999-2000. It's been 17 years and it's been 25, going to be 25 years since uh, April 19th when I think the murders of uh, people inside of our, elements inside of our government, I'm not saying everybody in our government, but ele elements inside of our government murdered those people. Well, you have something right behind you that is what you were wearing when you were building the, the church, right? The okay, this is what our motto was. You burn it, we build it. You know, this is a statement to the government. And then also, we got these new bumper stickers. Somebody else came up with this since it's, you know, modern day. Davidians' live, lives matter. 
you know, instead of Black Lives Matter. And you talk about where was Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton during this time? There, you know, one, at least one third of the people there were black. There were all sorts of people there from different foreign countries and this and that. Where, where, where were you, Jesse Jackson, during this time? You know, nothing was said that Rodney King was going on during that time. You got all kind of coverage with Rodney King, one black man being beat. But what about all the black people that were murdered there in, in Waco, Texas? Sheila Martins, her whole family was, was slaughtered there. There she is right there. Uh, you know, she's black. Her, her husband was black. Her, her children were black. How come Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton didn't say anything about that back then? Uh, you know, the Davidians are very forgiving people, but I just can't uh, really forgive what uh, our government did there. You said you're sending a message, and that message was in that motto? I think so. You're, you're the right. government is good about burning. They're good about burning things down, but, you know, patriots like us, we rebuild it. So... You're not a Branch Davidian, though. You don't share their beliefs. So what is it that you're defending? No, what do you I'm defending? not a Branch Davidian. Um, I'm more of a Baptist type person. So um, that's what I grew up as, Baptist. It, it's not that I care about their religion. I'm mad that they did this in our name. They did this in your name. They murdered those people at Waco in our name as the government since we're supposed to be the government in this country. Why do you think they did that? Why did the government go in? I think it all goes back to the Bohemian Grove. Just recently we had the uh, massacre there in Las Vegas with a pyramid behind it. Did y'all notice that there was a pyramid? Columbine, Oklahoma City bombing. 911, Waco, these people sacrifice to their God, which is the devil, Moloch. There he is, a horned devil, 40 foot stone owl that people like the bushes sacrifice on the altar and burn babies in effigy. I don't just think they do it in effigy, I think they do it in real life. In IE, Waco, 911, Columbine, you, the list goes on and on. Now we got a new one, Las Vegas, right in front of a pyramid. It goes back to, goes back to what happened here in Austin, Texas, on the tower. He was shooting off the owl tower. The tower looks like an owl, IE, Moloch. But Mike, when we were talking on the phone... I'm not the only one that has those, yeah. those beliefs. When we were talking on the phone, you told me that this was about Second Amendment. That you felt that, that you know, you did not share the Davidians' belief. But you felt that there were Second Amendment issues involved. Talk to me about that. Well, there were Second... In, uh, the, the ATF went out there for a $200 fine. Why didn't they just get David Koresh while he was jogging down the road or going to one of his businesses? You know, why did the government have to go in there and shoot everything up, come in there uh, and shoot everything up? I mean, David Koresh was standing at the door saying, hey, there's men and women and children in here. And they shot through the door and shot him in his, in his side. And, and his brother-in-law was standing be, behind him and blew his guts out. And he, he died a horrible death. That was a mailman. They ran over everything with tanks. Even government, a gover, governor, uh, government issued mail truck. They ran over. They ran over the trees. They ran over the the all of the cars out there. The government just went out there and destroyed everything. And, and I was in the army. You know, we're we're supposed to be there to protect America. And, well, they are there to the army's there to break things and kill people. Yeah, but. The police, like the ATF, are there. They're supposed to be uh, protecting us. And what happened? They got out there and shot everybody up. There were men, women, and children. There were especially women and children on the second floor, and they just riddled that place with bullets. Have you seen the blinds and everything else and the broken windows and the door? How come the door disappeared in the, in the trial? There's so many unanswered questions. And I'm not going to sit here and tell y'all that I know everything, but there's a lot of documentaries out there that pr has proved it over the years, last 20 years. 
And uh, Mike Minolti, Alex Jones, Jeff Davis, myself, we've all made documentaries to, uh, to prove these things. And we've had the Branch Davidians on to tell their, the best uh, evidence you have is the surviving Branch Davidians. Of course, some of them are dead, like Catherine Madison. She's in my documentary saying that they definitely were shooting out of helicopters into David Koresh's room. They shot one guy eating a piece of toast on his bed. But, but how much is what I'm asking is how much does the attack have to do with a government attack on the Second Amendment? Because that's what I understood. I thought well, you that, that's also uh, part of it, too, because the ATF was going to get their funding cut, it, uh, uh, cut severely. So the ATF went in there with uh, Showtime. They called it Showtime. They even had, uh, had people there filming it, that they were going to go in there and get this really, uh, these people that were selling guns at the gun show, and they were going to get them, and they were going to get these people, and... Of course, every, it, they went in there, and every day we heard on the news something different. Well, David Koresh said he's Jesus, and David Koresh is molesting children, and this and that. And David Koresh had uh, guns, and he had to, most of those guns were being sold at the, the gun show. You can talk to the Branch Davidians about it. They were selling those guns at a gun show to uh, make money to run that place. That was a 50-room with a church complex they call it compound but uh, you know it was really a church and i'm not saying that i would do what they did i wouldn't want a, a leader and ha be in a, 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 a church with or 50 live with 50 other people or 100 other people that's not me but what i'm saying is the government went in there and murdered those people under our name and i did not approve of it you told me on the phone that you felt that it was you were defending, you and Alex were defending them because it's not only attack on them, it's attack on you. Tell me about that. Talk Absolutely. About if, if they can do it to those people in the middle of, uh, of uh, nowhere, in, in the middle of Waco, Texas, they can come here to Gonzales, Texas, like they've tried to do recently. Uh, they can come anywhere and do it to you. We have to stand up where we can or these people are going to end up sacrificing your grandchildren in the future. Where well, they're already doing it with vaccines and chemtrails and everything else. They're doing everything they can to kill your, your family off. Y'all need to really investigate that too. But is it, uh, you know, there's always been this tension between the government and federal rule, uh, free, uh, the, the federal rules and freedom to, protect, for, to practice religion, freedom to own guns, I mean, how do you see that tension? What, what makes you, what worries you about that tension between the government and your freedoms to protect religion, to practice religion as you want, and your freedoms to own the guns you want? Well, how much of a conflict do you see is there? Well, in this country, you know, we have individual liberty is what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to have group liberty like Obama wants and Hillary Clinton wants to be one village and raise your children. We have a right in this country to have individual liberty and what that comes with is responsibility. As long as you're not hurting somebody or, or hurting somebody's property, you should be free to do whatever you want in this country. And one of those liberties is to have guns if you want. But you can't go out there and, and, and kill people like they do. So it comes with responsibility. Freedom comes with responsibility. If you don't want responsibility, you're going to get a government like ours, or head, ours is heading for underneath all these people like Obama and the Clintons. They want to control you, not the other way around. We should be able to do what we want as long as we don't hurt somebody or hurt somebody's property. That's what this country was founded on, not what they're touting over here. They're touting democracy. I'm touting a constitutional republic. Do you know the difference? A democracy is three wolves in a sheep deciding what's for dinner. A constitutional republic is we protect the minority, which is me. I'm not talking about black or white or whatever. Minority is somebody who wants to have individual liberty. Like, you can't vote that we all wear blue hats on Fridays. That's what a constitutional republic is. We, we, that's why the constitution for which we stand, that's why it's in, it's in there in the pledge. But a democracy is what Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, 
Obama says it a lot. They all say it. They all say we live in a democracy. We do not live in a democracy. We live in a constitutional republic. That's what they need to be teaching our children, our grandchildren out there. If I could say anything, that would be the... And what happened to those people out there? Yeah, that's a democracy. What happens when you protect the minority, which they were the minority at the time because nobody liked them because they were just kooks out there in the middle of nowhere practicing and had a, had a leader and they were kooks. Okay, in a constitutional republic, we protect those people. We don't kill them. Do you feel that your rights, your freedoms are under attack by the U.S. government? They have been uh, for a long time. I think we're... Wait, I, uh, they. What, what is they? So they. Wait, the, no, no, not they, but I said, my question was, do you feel that your freedoms are under attack by the U.S. government? So the they is the freedoms. Not only the U.S. government, but the local government, the state government, and anybody else that has power over us, they're always going to be trying to get more power over us and take our liberty away. That's why we always are in a fighting mode. Look at all the wars that we fought. And uh, we even fought the uh, Civil War because of it. Because the South thought we that, that the other government was taking our liberties away. It, it all comes down to somebody trying to take power over somebody else. It always comes down to that. And it, with us, we're always going three steps forward and two steps back with, with this government. And that's just the way it is. And with, with, the soup, with these people that I'm talking about, the ones, the secret rulers of the world, uh, you know, there's about 13 families that run the whole world. Look it up. It's not Mike Hansen. I just learned a lot of that from, from Alex Jones and Jeff Davis and all my research over the years. And we even snuck in and caught them doing their little dirty uh, uh, business over here in California. And they've been doing that for 135 years. So what would you think 50 years ago, if you, would you let somebody, let me just ask you this, would you let somebody babysit your children or walk your dog if you knew that they were in California under the Redwood Forest worshiping a 40-foot stone owl and burning a baby in effigy, would you let somebody watch your kid? But then again, you let them run your government. So that's all I have to say about that issue. Alex Jones, that's my last question to you yes. right here. Why does Alex Jones care about Waco? Well, Alex Jones, we all started together on Access TV, you know, way back in the mid-90s. And what, he, he cared about Waco because of the liberty issue. I got to know, be good friends with all the Branch Davidians when they came to the TV shows. And I really, it was really my agenda to have that place rebuilt. And I talked to Clive about it, and Catherine really wanted it. Uh, rebuilt. She was one of the oldest Branch Davidians. She just recently died a couple of years ago. And I kind of pushed Alex into promoting it on his radio show because he, he just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and he's good at promotion. And I'm kind of the behind the scenes person. So my agenda was to have Alex Jones promote rebuilding the church at Waco. And that's the dirty secret out there. Uh, I, I really pushed Alex to do it, and he took the bait. And, but he really wanted to do it also. And, uh, because why? You say he, he did it because of the liberty issue. He did it because he wanted to make the place a memorial to the people that died. And he also wanted to put a thumb in the eye of the government also, I'm sure, like I did. And uh, it was pretty rough out there. I mean, we had the Ku Klux Klan come down and try to burn us out of the and shoot the place up there's bullet holes it's still in the church today from the ku klux klan trying to burn the place down we shot back though not me but other people that were protecting the place that night uh shot back so we didn't hear from them anymore they went back to illinois or wherever they were from but um, why did they want to shoot shoot up the church? Why did they wanted to burn it down. Right. They wanted to burn the church down because they didn't want to see the church re, rebuilt. Because one, like I said, one third of the people there were black. 
So I guess that was their agenda. I don't know, but I, we really think that they, they also threatened Alex's life right there on the courthouse steps at Waco. And we, it's on film. You can go to Mike Hansen archives and see it. And, um, uh, Alex bullhorned them the whole time they were there on the on the courthouse steps. So it, it was great. We had a protest against them. Uh, and some of the Branch of Indians even showed up to that. The Branch of Indians usually don't get involved in our little uh, New World Order uh, events that we're trying to stop. They're just kind of really, the Branch of Indians are good-hearted, God-fearing people. And I love them to death. I, I, I think they're just the most humblest people around. And uh, I think what they did to those people is a tragedy. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go to the memorials every year at the church we rebuilt for them. But that's about all that we can do for them anymore. You know, they're, they've made them, they're, they're just destitute. All of them, they've taken all, everything from them. So, I, you know, all we can do is pray for them. Timothy McVeigh. Timothy McVeigh was at Waco. What do you? Well, he him? worked for the government. He was a. Who's he? Who's he? So, Timothy McVeigh. Uh, he was. He. You know his on his resume is right there. He he was uh, in the army. So you know, on the second anniversary when uh, Oklahoma City happened, uh, they tried to blame that on the the Branch Davidians at first, and I I just I just I don't know why that they would try to do that but the the ones we're talking about here you know that was another sacrifice by the way in that building they had the waco documents that's one of the reasons why that building was was blown up and then on, at 9 the oklahoma city and the waco documents were in in that building uh, one of the buildings that fell so, you know, this government does nothing but murder and cover up. That's what my feelings are on Waco. And I still don't think that they've been vindicated. It's came out over the years on hard copy. You know, some of that, some of those, and even some of the mainstream media that these people were actually murdered and there's been a big cover up. And, uh, you know, Janet Reno, uh, sh she said, right there in the hearings that the tanks were like a good rent car she was comparing tanks going through a building with win, women children and men on the other side of that wall like a rent car well you know she's facing her maker right now you know she she died did you know what she said she said donald trump will never be my president in my lifetime well she died the same day that donald trump became president i've never been able to find anywhere that Donald Trump is involved with this part of this cult uh, in our government that is uh, at Bohemia Grove. So I really think there's a struggle right now between this part of the New World Order and the super elite and the uh, secret rulers of the world and Donald Trump's bunch. I'm not saying Donald Trump's all that, but what I'm saying, there's a struggle going on there. And that's what I like. I just don't like one part of the New World Order running our government. At least we got some hope. And I hope, if you're listening out there, Donald Trump, that you really are real. Because he's really trying to fight these pedophiles and everything else in Hollywood and people running our government. And there still could be hope for our grandchildren. Andy, do you have any other questions? Because then I'm going to just ask Mike to actually give us a little bit of a tour so we have some pictures. Any other questions? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, just tell me again what uh, pictures you wanted to show, Mike. Uh, yeah. Just, well, whatever what's y'all want. Important. I mean, you know, basically because this is your tour and your museum, mm -hmm. I would say, you know, just. Well, this is this is some of the, you know, when the Branch Davidians uh, first got out of prison, we had a lot of protests. So. Are you starting now? Well, I can. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think he's like starting. It. I just want to understand. I'm, only, I'm, I'm always going. All right. I just want to keep the day. lighting. Okay. Uh, so it's workable. So if you get into, into here, it's just kind of bright. So yeah. Well, you could get close-ups of this, couldn't you? Let, and then put it, uh, insert it in there. Are y'all doing that good kind of editing? Those are real good films. Alex sold a lot of those films over the years. Millions, probably.
And they're on the internet now for free. Alex's old bullhorn sold for like forty-five thousand dollars on the eBay. one he bullhorned up. Uh, <laughs> really? The Ku Klux Klan yeah. with. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. I have got to get. I have got to get the, all over your. You talking about somebody give you an interview? Alex will give you an interview. Well, Mike, you did he's pretty the, great. He's the he's the the professional that I really am behind the scenes person. I did that for twenty years behind the scenes. Okay, uh, is he going to give this to camera to you or what's your? Yeah, well, I mean, I think to camera because it's got. We need just a little B-roll to just set it up. So, um, so Mike, just don't talk to me. Talk to okay. Andy and just give us a few highlights. Like, let's say four four highlights from this, and just kind okay. of move through. Here's this moment. Here's okay. that moment. Here's that. All moment. right. Okay. Anytime you're ready. And uh, are you gonna are you gonna keep uh, are you gonna talk about this at all? Just because it makes well, sense. No, okay. I already talked about that. Y'all got that on. All right. All right, whenever you're ready, sir. Well, here's a bunch of pictures of my friends, the Branch of Indians. When they got out of prison, most of them, they came on uh, our TV shows, uh, Access TV. And uh, there's Grandma Edna, there's Sheila, there's Catherine Madison. Uh, actually, we had a bunch of protests uh, when, when the people, you know, used to think they were bad people. We would get out into the public and... and uh, showcase them in front of the public and went on the radio with them and everything else and really went on all the media and we had our own TV shows and we'd bring them on there and try to change the public's mind about really what happened there at Waco because back you, you think about it 20 years ago people thought those people were almost like the devil uh, that's the way the media portrayed them you know every day they'd come out with something different oh they were child molesters oh they th think they're Jesus oh they did this they did that Janet Reno and her bunch would come out with something every single day that they while that standoff was going on that they how bad they were. So to the first thing I think we really did for the Branch Davidians when they got out of prison is try to change the image of the way the public thought about these people. These people are good, God fearing people, and they're the most humblest people that you would ever meet in your life. And I just felt that I had to take up for them. Because, you know, they're, all their families were killed and murdered. Eighty-two of their uh, fellow uh, church people were killed. And plus, you know, I even care about the four agents that were killed. They had families, too. Even though we think that Bill Clinton had something to do with, you know, some of them were Bill Clinton's ex-bodyguards. And we think that Bill Clinton had something to do with killing them. But that's a whole nother story. But... Uh, we had protest after protest. We had Waco uh, uh, protest. Uh, Mike, Mike, just keep moving through this okay. a little bit. I mean, just a little shorter. Okay. I, mean, I think because here are the pictures of you and, in the building. Yeah. Uh, Alex promoted it on the radio. We had uh, 43 people from 43 states and two foreign countries come to help when Alex plugged it on the radio and other people too. And uh, I was the project coordinator. My job was to get all the materials there for all the volunteers to um, uh, come rebuild on Sundays. We didn't rebuild on Saturdays because that was their religious day. And uh, of course, back then I was a lot skinnier. And it, the first day was way over 100 degrees when we were digging those holes. And um, you know, we went all the way through Christmas and everything else to become colder later. Can you so point at some of those pictures over there? This one here is Alex is standing in front of uh, some of the rubble. Uh, the government just took the building and just pushed it in piles, and that was hard to get rid of. We had to clean the property, and we had to uh, rebuild the, uh, the, the church, and it was no easy task being out in the middle of nowhere. And we raised over $250,000 to do it with, which was a lot of money uh, back then. And, uh, of course, the Ku Klux Klan came to Waco uh, having a rally at the, at the courthouse steps. Alex bullhorned them the whole time that they were there, and they threatened Alex's life on film. They said they were going to kill Alex Jones. And they came out that night and tried to burn down the Branch Davidian new church that we were building. They shot the place up. We shot back. I didn't personally, but some of the people that were protecting the place did. And the bullet holes are still there in the church. So 
Um, Mike, I think I think actually we're good. That's okay. good points. Now, if you can okay. just get some of these cut away. And also, uh, hey, Mike, can I ask you a couple questions? Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put also, Alec, right. we found a bunch of bullets uh, from the standoff there when Actually, we were digging. We found a lot of artifacts when we were uh, digging one of these. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, where are we right now? What is this place? Well, this is kind of my homemade museum about uh, Waco and uh, Bohemia Grove and all the patriots that's been fighting the New World Order for 25 years. Whose idea was this? Well, it was mine. I had all this stuff, and I was going to donate it to a Waco Sorry, museum. Can you say again if it's your idea? That's a whole sentence. Well, it was my idea. I was going to donate all this Waco stuff to the Branch Davidians uh, for their museum, but I understand that uh, the newspaper took all their artifacts and uh, is has them in storage. And I don't want the stuff in storage. I want people to be able to see what really happened 25 years ago. Yeah. Who comes in here, and, and what, what do they uh, what do they say about it? Well, not many people come in here. I have a I have businesses here and a little gift shop out front. But if somebody comes in and say, "Hey, that's Mike Hansen," I bring them back here and show them uh, my private museum. When you step in this room, how, how do you feel? I feel pretty good that we've we've really stood up over the last twenty five years, and we stood up for the Branch Davidians and the people, their families that uh, were murdered. Do you love them? Do, uh, like, what do you what do you think of these people? Do you do you pity them or do you love them? I don't pity them. I I, I think they're very good, God fearing people, and I think they're very humble. And uh, you know, if it was me and they killed my family like that, I'd still be mad twenty five years later. These people are very forgiving for what happened, and I think the government needs to come out and uh, ask for forgiveness. And they over the last couple couple of years, uh, 20 years or so, th there's been stuff coming out on the media that uh, the Vidians weren't as bad as uh, they made them out to be 25 years ago. So just pick one thing in this museum that you that really means a lot to you, just one image or one thing, and, and tell me about it. I think the picture of myself and Catherine Madison and Sheila, uh, you know, People she won't know who they are. So, uh, well, Catherine Madison was one of the oldest survivors. They had her in the Waco movie throwing her hair, her gray hair back with a machine gun at the window, which was totally fake in that movie. Okay, but and, just back up. If you can tell me, just so people know who Sheila is, tell me about that picture again. Well, Catherine Madison is one of the oldest uh, Branch Davidian survivors, and she was in. She's very famous for being in the Waco, the first Waco movie they came out with on on TV with throwing her hair back, her gray hair back, and machine gunning the ATF down, which was totally, totally, came out in the trial totally wrong. She had a bad eye. She couldn't even shoot. That's why they didn't prosecute her. Sheila Martin, uh, her four children, and her husband was Wayne Martin, the one on the um, a 911 tape saying, call it off. We got men and women and children in here. And... Um, her husband was like the first, one of the first black lawyers of um, Harvard, up, up, up in some famous uh, law school. So he wasn't just some idiot in there. He was very educated. And what about objects? Is there any particular object that you think kind of tells a story that you want to pick up and show us? Well, this one here is my favorite. This is one of the first things I uh, I I uh, I collected in my Waco collection, it compares what happened in Poland to what happened in, in America in 1993. And there's just some of the pictures. When I first went, they, you know, they tore their bus up. They smashed this old lady's trailer with a tank. Uh, you know, all this has been cleaned up now. And it, the place is beautiful now again. And uh, I'm just really proud that I had a little bit to do with it. You feel pretty good about it. I really do. And uh, if anybody says anything about Mike Hansen, that's what I'd like them to remember, that we spent seven months out there in the harshest weather, hot, cold, and one of the harshest countries, I mean, the uh, uh, land in Texas, out in the middle of nowhere, rebuilding this church. And we really had a good fellowship doing it, I think. Why'd you do it? 
I did it because we wanted to. Sorry, we, actually, you, you re, if just so people know, you, okay. you rebuilt the church? Well, we rebuilt the church because Catherine Madison always had the dream, one of the oldest survivors, to go back and live there, which she never got to because it, it's it's very difficult to live out there. But we, we, did, we did rebuild the church for her and all the rest of the survivors. But we did it for a couple reasons. To have a memorial for the people that died there, and we did it because we wanted to kind of say mm, to the government, don't ever do it again or we will rebuild. That's why we did it. And, uh, you know, they want to rebuild their stuff. Like when they uh, uh, collapsed the towers over there at 911, they wanted to rebuild that. So we wanted to rebuild the church. So uh, what else you need? We're good. That's great. Yeah, if you can just get some of these cutaways really quickly, we're just a little out of okay. time on time. Thank All you, right. sir. You are terrific. Mike. Oh, but Thank I want you. to give you something. Make sure you get this on my Facebook. Come on over here. I want to give you this. I want to give you a Davy Crockett's hat. It's Miriam. Right? Muriel. Muriel. She gets a Davy Crockett hat from one of the descendants. There you go. Oh, my goodness. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. I want to give you a sticker. A Davidian's Life Matter sticker. I want to give you a come and take it flag. You need to do a story on Gonzales, Texas. What happened here with the come and take it? Boy, this is a story there. And I want That's to give presents, you a book. I wish Alex would plug it more. I can guarantee you that. But um, I really worked hard. Yes, I am. I really worked hard on this book. And uh, it's a really good read. And it tells how Alex Jones and I got into the Bohemia Grove. I appreciate it. There you go. Thank you. Right here for the, for our Facebook. God bless you. Thank you. Which and I hope you do a good story. Your...